Welcome to Barnstable Today. I'm Nick Cortez. This past weekend, the town's Renewable Energy Commission sponsored a public demonstration of a blower door test for one of the outbuildings under construction at the Angeline Crocker Hinckley Hostel on Hyannis Harbor. Blower door tests are becoming increasingly common components of home energy audits, which makes sense considering that the test is the best way to determine how much air is leaking into and out of your home. For a little more background, here's Town Energy Coordinator Richard Elric. Today we uh, had an opportunity to uh, observe how a blower door test uh, is accomplished. Uh, this is a house that you can see behind me uh, that is uh, uh, being finished, being constructed. Uh, it's uh, very much unfinished at this point, but we did want to get a sense of uh, the kind of airflow and air leak issues uh, that exist at this stage of the house's construction. Uh, we will come back. Uh, as it's uh, further constructed, when the drywall comes uh, on, uh, we'll get a better sense of uh, how successful the air sealing has been uh, to this point. Uh, and then, uh, of course, when the house is uh, completely constructed, there'll be another blower door test. But essentially, a blower door test is a, an opportunity to exhaust all of the, uh, or much of the air out of the house, and therefore creating a sort of a, a negative pressure environment and drawing uh, the outside air in. And so you can get a sense of how well or uh, not well a house has been sealed. Now let's go inside the building for the test itself. Architect and REC Vice Chair Allison Alessi, whose firm created the design plans for the hostel, took us through why the blower door test was important at this stage of construction. She also offered some tips and tricks on how to properly insulate and seal up a home to make it as tight as possible. Typically we do a blower door test when there's um, drywall on the walls in an existing house can go in and do that but we I always like to do it a little earlier because you can catch things that you've missed with the leak so we'll go and see what happens you can feel where the air is moving and where the leaks are but we're going to try to do some caulking and some spray foam around the windows and and then test it again and see um, if we can get a difference hopefully we will <laughs> You can see some insulation actually. It's typically you do the insulation behind the tubs as soon as you can, and unfortunately they've done fiberglass insulation back here, which is not a great air sealer. What's My, the best air sealer right now that people are using in new construction? I mean, what we like in walls is blown-in cellulose insulation. It just you spray it in under pressure. It's usually has some stickiness to it, I should say, and it fills all the cracks and the crevices. You can uh, see with the bat insulation. It relies on more of a friction fit, and it has to be perfect to fit in the vase. And you see the vase aren't all the same, and it's been cut and taped a little bit. It's yes. not very good at air sealing. Yes. Fiberglass lets um, air move through, and that's what we're trying to eliminate, air moving through. Air equals heat, or even water moving through buildings, which we don't want to see. Another insulation detail that we always try to do is under the slab. So this is a slab on grade construction, typically in a house. Um, you have a full basement, but here we don't, and so we have one inch of rigid under the slab, and the detail is that it wraps up here, so it kind of isolates the slab. If you don't do that, there's a huge heat loss through the edge here where this is sitting on concrete. This stops the heat from going out, so it's an important detail. After the blower had been running for a while, you could actually feel the air rushing in through some of the joints and the window sills. Here, REC member Bob Franey provides some good context as to how this can impact your energy bills. Feel the amount of air that's coming between these two. Just put your hand right there. Right there. Yeah, yeah, I can feel it. That's amazing. And that's coming, that's not coming from below, is it coming from it? It's, it's coming right through this joint. This joint. So what are you going to do? You have to cock that as well or tape it? Can you do it in there? That's you amazing. You can't cock it, but this joint on the bottom is even more pronounced because you very seldom do you get a, a flush uh, surface. And even, you have though, that, you know, even though you've got this right here, yeah, it's yeah. Still, there's still quite a bit of leakage right there. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, would you would you would you put up with that amount of air leaking through your window in your house? Of course not. No. You know, when you multiply all of that, you might as well have this window open a little bit. And we set up the blower door, say we measure uh, 800 CFM of leakage. And to illustrate them, to illustrate to them how much leakage is occurring in that house, we'll then take a window and begin to open the window until we get 1600 CFM of leakage. And double it and say, look, 
That's the amount of air that's coming into your house. And it's very easy to understand when that windows opens, you know, then they can see it. And nobody would ever put up with that amount of leakage through their windows. After the test was over, Bob explained to us some of the more technical aspects of how the blower door test measures air leakage. He also gave us some more insight into the best way to air seal a home. We bring the building down to 50 pascals of negative pressure. Okay. It's a standard. Uh, we, we're using that standard to measure structures against one another. Uh, it's not, certainly not uh, the natural conditions that you see every single day, but uh, you know the engineering community has given us this standard to work with and given us uh, like standards of, of, of where that building should be. So what we're trying to do, we measure the building and we try and bring it to where uh, we're told it should be. So when we bring the building down to negative 50 pascals, that's given us how much air is coming into the building at that pressure. Okay. So we were 350 something CFM. I would assume that a lot of what we were seeing was leakage coming by backdraft dampers in the bathroom fan. Um, as you could see, we were getting a little bit around the sill, uh, around pipe penetrations, which we sealed up, around the windows. Uh, that, that, this house here, uh, as small as it is, it was built very well. And, and, and I expect to see a very, very tight house when they're done with it. Usually, uh, a multi-level building, you get what's called stack effect. It wants to behave like a chimney. The air wants to come in down low around the sill or leakage in the foundation. If you have an old house, block foundation, stone foundation, and it wants to escape high. And the most effective way of doing it is to attack the leaks down low and up high. Attic, uh, attic leaks, le uh, air leaks through the second floor ceiling. Mm -hmm. If you attack those, start up high and get as much of the air leakage sealed up up high that you can, and you're going to, in effect, hold the air down inside your house. So should you have a blower door test done at your home? Richard Elric thinks so, and he shared with us the reasons why. You know, it's, it's all well and good to be green, and that's a lot of why we do these sorts of things, but there are really significant cost savings uh, for a, a homeowner uh, that makes sure that his house is well sealed and uh, well insulated. Uh, in many cases, you can see energy savings of uh, 10 to 20 percent uh, annually, and so those are significant savings, and they certainly uh, more than pay for any of the energy uh, improvements that are required to make your house tighter. So, for example, uh, with a brand new house, if you were to spend uh, an extra three or four thousand dollars in energy efficiency improvements and and you sort of incorporate that into what the increased mortgage payments would be your energy cost savings in your first month would more than pay for those uh, additional mortgage payments so it really is uh, penny wise and pound foolish not to take advantage of uh, all of the energy efficiency improvements that you can make in your home uh, certainly they have to start with the Cape Light Compact Home Energy Assessment that gives you a, 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 a standard of, of where your home is at. Uh, at the same time, recommendations are made uh, to you by the uh, technicians who did the assessment uh, as to what improvements would be appropriate, where you would add insulation, where you would increase your air sealing. Uh, from the Cape Light like, uh, Compact's perspective, the majority of those costs are picked up by the Cape Light Compact. I believe 80 percent of, of any costs are picked up by the Cape Light Compact for a residential uh, homeowner and for a business as well. Um, and there are also uh, uh, additional rebates that are available for some of the appliances you can buy. Uh, uh, if, if you want to go so far as to change some of your windows around, uh, um, uh, there was a federal tax credit that's available. So uh, again, you got to start with the Cape Light Compact. That's the place to begin to get your assessment uh, and then a, a determination as to what you need to add. But uh, it's, it's as easy almost as it could be. The Cape Light Compact is administered through Barnstable County Government. The organization is an electric power supplier and promotes energy efficiency through a variety of programs. To sign up for a free CLC home energy assessment, call 1-800-797-6699. Now, let's take a look at this week's meetings. Well, that's all for now. I'm Nick Cortese, and we'll see you next time on Barnstable Today.